The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests, and not necessarily those of the staff or management of Worldwide Digital Broadcasting Corporation. Rise! Get yourselves together! Rise! Stand up and live your life! Rise! Get yourselves together! Rise! Hands up! Hands up high! Welcome to the Rise Above Show. I am Joe Peroni. I'm Heidi Mancini, and this is Evelyn Mancini, Spoon Mancini. <laughs> Heidi's mom. My mother. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, first, tell everybody so about First, our... we have to thank Marie from MealPrepLasVegas.com. It's the Las Vegas Best Meal Plan.com. Originally, MealPrepVegas.com. And the phone number is 702-624-9286. Give Marie a call. She will customize your meals to whatever you want. She's great. Perfect. So thank you, Marie, for partnering with our show. We appreciate it. And also Jay Jung from City Athletic. He also partners with the Rise Above show every week. He's the owner of City Athletic Club. You're running the show today. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thank Mom, you all for coming. Thanks, thanks for coming on the show today. <laughs> so, so, do you want me to blow your show up or do you want me to behave? <laughs> you can do whatever you want. You can okay. do whatever you want. All right. Mm -hmm. So, how are you today? I'm okay. Yeah. Are you nervous? Yeah, a little bit. Why? I don't know because um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's not often you get to do well, a live I, show. <laughs> yeah. See, if it was just us sitting here, that would be fine. But that that screen over there, you know, it's like... Don't look at them. <laughs> okay. Well, I wanted to have you on the show today for a couple of reasons. One was so that I always have this on video, so I always have a memory. Oh. If, you know. <laughs> and the other thing was I just wanted to talk to you about your life. Oh. And where you came just from. Just don't make me cry. Well, that's what I told Joe. I said, she's yeah, probably, that to everybody. She's probably so. going to cry a lot. It's going to be, you know, but, you know, I just wanted to want to start with, like, your mom and, you know, your beginnings, where you came from. Yeah. What um, you can remember. My mom was, um, she was very happy-go-lucky, always positive. What was her name? Beatrice. Beatrice. Beatrice Lorraine. Oh. I never, I didn't know that. Yeah. Beatrice Lorraine. And uh, anyway, make a long story short, um, the children were all taken away from her by my father, supposedly my father. And um, she was in and out of grandma's house. You know, every, you know she'd always say that she had a job somewhere else. But we don't know what she was doing. She could have been on the space program, you know. But, um, and then um, my grandmother uh, took me from an orphanage and raised me. Hmm. And uh, I love my grandpa to death. Well, let me back it up just a second. Okay. Why, why do you think that your you kids were taken away from your mother? Oh, because my father was... Um, I see. I don't want to say anything bad about him either because I don't know. I was too young to recall really what he was like. But anyway, um, the older um, brothers and sisters say that he wasn't a very nice person. So uh, he proved my mother be to be unfit only because when what they would call CPS today. Mm -hmm. Um, it was welfare or something back then, right, yeah, and like they child came. To, services. Yeah, and they came to the house after he reported that, and uh, found that uh, mom didn't have any cleaning supplies or nothing. So it's like he was the the master of the house. Why didn't you, you know, mm -hmm. give her enough money or whatever to get that stuff? So anyway, the kids were taken away, and. Uh, I talked to him. I um, 
they were threatened never to speak to me, but they used to live like two streets behind my street. And we would sneak between the fields and see each other, <laughs> you know. And um, my favorite was um, my brother Hank, um, but he passed away from um, heavy smoking, mm -hmm. a heart attack, and too much drinking, the alcoholic beverage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, my oldest sister, she passed away with heart trouble, but she had a hard life too. So it's like we just dug up all the dirt, you know? <laughs> we, <laughs> we just lived in the dirt pile, what the heck? <laughs> um, so then well, when my grandmother took me uh, between her sisters and her children, they had farms and they were in the country and that, and that was my best time. Just in getting, the country? Yeah. So why did you go? Why were, did you go into an orphanage? Oh, animals or whatever, <laughs> you know, <laughs> animals, fields, trees, plants. Well, you're still like that. You I still know. like to be outside with your doggies and your yeah. plants. But why did you? Why did you go into an orphanage? Um, because uh, my mother was uh, proven unfit. And my father got the other four children, and I was put in an orphanage because I actually, I can understand it now, I was too young for him to take care of me because my sister Carol is a year younger than me. So it's like I would have been, what, six months old and she was a year and a half? Having mm. a man raise a kid? I, I don't know. What's they can do that? it today. Well, they can do it today, but... Back then, I don't think men knew too much about anything. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is if she, I mean, I'm not trying to get whatever, but if she was unfit, like, how was she unfit? I mean, because... She was unfit, to like... To go through all that trouble to take the kids away from her, and he doesn't have them anyway. Yeah. That doesn't make sense to me. Like, okay, you, you fought a fight, a good fight. You pull the kids out of the home, away from their biological mother... And then you go, oh, and by the way, I don't think I can handle raising two young people, two young babies. So yeah, let's just he, put them in a system. Yeah, he did raise Carol. Oh, but he didn't he raise He raised you. the four of them. I was the one that was sent to Hokey Pokey. Mm. So then, uh, but he proved my mo mother being non-fit. Because back then, it didn't take much. All you had to do was go to the welfare and say, she's unfit to raise kids. You know, either the house isn't clean or no groceries, whatever. Nowadays, you have to jump through hoops. Did she? She she didn't have that stuff because he wouldn't provide it. He would rather go out and uh, mingle with his women and his bottle of beer. Mm. Mm. So let me see if I get this right. So your your dad raised your Four. other, yeah. But left you in the orphanage. Put, put me in the orphanage, yeah. Oh, you want to hear a good uh, one? Let me add to this because I know you have more to ask my mother. He lived across the street from me on Pine Street. My biological grandfather, her dad, like he used he to come literally, and visit. He did? Yeah. Oh, well, years he, later I found out that yeah. they lived actually kitty corner. Like our house was here, and I could literally go just go this way. And he was over across the street raising his his own family, and he was my biological because we grew up not knowing yeah. our grandparents. Yeah. And, well, grandma on dad's side for a minute, but, but she. But that up was Connie and Orv. That was his stepdaughter. That he used to go visit Kitty Corner. Mm. Orv and Connie. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Hmm. And they were stepchildren. He treated them better than he did his own. How old was your was your mom younger than him? Your dad? I don't think so. I think there, I don't think there was too much of a separation in age. But he was in the, the army, and um, actually he came back and said uh, he came back for some kind of leave or whatever, and um, the lady at the welfare said. Oh, no, don't you believe when he says that he's not your father, you're definitely his father. You're, he's your father. Hmm. Because they had all kinds of uh, 
dates and proof and stuff. Right. Mm. But that didn't matter. It just, you know. Hmm. So wow. I was stuck in the clinker. Hmm. <laughs> stuck in the clinker. <laughs> then my grandmother come and she got me out. I, uh, my mother used to come back and forth to grandma's house and kind of live there and not live there and live there again and not whatever. Do you, th- does your, do you think your mom had some kind of mental issues or something? No. Because why, I mean, I don't want to get it, whatever. I'm just a little confused because she would come and go and come and go. So she wanted to see you, but yet she still wasn't involved in, even though you were taken away from yeah. her. Yeah. She would just yeah. kind of come and go. Yeah. So I don't know what her problem was. Okay, I'm I, just I think because as a mother, like if, and I'm not trying to be hurtful yeah. here. I, I'm trying to understand it, why she would just make a visit when she felt like it to her mother's house, who like you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, I put the excuse as that she was so hurt and distraught over losing her other four children. She knew the one was being taken care of, that it just kind of she went. Kind of independent bongers, I guess you call it. I don't know. Hmm. I was, see, I was too young. I was 16 when she died. She died at 45. And it, it, the time that we had together before she died was only like six months when she finally got me through the courts. And um, we didn't have mother to daughter talks. Mm. Because she was too sick to get into that. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? What about the older sisters and brothers? I mean, they don't have a, a take on any of that? Yeah, Marion used to come down and, and help take care of Mom. But when, you know, when I was 16, I was, when she had cancer, it's not a nice sight. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, you have the bedding you got to change. You gotta wash her, and you gotta wash mm-hmm. this and that, and mm-hmm. you know. So for a sixteen-year-old still going to school, um, I think that was hard on me, but I didn't give it any thought at that time. Mm-hmm. I just did it. Mm-hmm. She had to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You just do it. So what does that do to your um, how you feel about yourself, your self-esteem to? be in an orphanage when the other kids are with your dad I never thought too much of that Mm. because I thought well my grandmother she must have cared a little bit she come and got me Okay. and then I lived with my grandmother and grandfather and my uncle Rollin he lived there also then he married the girl across the street Aunt Mabel and we were one big happy family. <laughs> After church, they get out of church and curse like a bunch of demons. <laughs> oh my <Yeah>. lord! <laughs> so, what is, a, what is an orphanage like? Do you remember that? No. You don't. Have, you don't really remember. No, that? I remember uh, Grandma saying something because um, I remember being under the snowball bush, and we were going to have pictures taken, and. She said, you don't do that. You go in the house. So I must have tutored my pants, Mm -hmm. you know, or something. And uh, she's the one that taught me about all the cleaning and... So you just, so, the question Joe asked you about your self-esteem, so you never really thought about it? No, no, no. Never really gave it too much of a thought. Just that I knew that my grandmother and grandfather wanted me, and I lived in this big, nice house and big yard and animals. <laughs> 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 and I can remember having a big um, coal bin, but you don't want you don't want to hear that stuff. <laughs> but it's like I used to eat um, veggies out of my grandmother's garden, go out and pull up a carrot, wipe it on my pants, and crunch it down, you know. And she'd come out shaking her fist like get out of my garden garden, you know but um she didn't really mean it that was your mom's mom yeah yeah and she lived to be how old grandma uh 78 and if we get into that that's another story (laughs) (laughs) because back then well she had a hernia and she used to do washing and ironing for other people with the ringer washer Wow. Rinse them in tubs <laughs> twice, hang them outside, 
But anyway, she had a hernia. She had, went to the doctor. They decided to do an operation on it, and they messed up the operation. Mm. Let's put it that way. I mean, it's a, a, a gruesome thing you don't want to talk about. Mm. <laughs> so mm. then she passed away. Hmm. But Did you know about any of this stuff? No. No. Really? Mm. So you, have, you no. haven't talked about this? No. Is there a reason why? <laughs> <laughs> I I never brought the subject up, and they never they asked. Never asked. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. I mean, they shouldn't have to, but um, my life got to the point where I guess that was past history. Hmm. You know, I'd, I'd tell them certain things that I think they'd want to know, but... You know, other than that, why go into the gruesome? Right. <laughs> <laughs> the gruesome. The nitty gritty. So, so, yeah. When you were growing up, is it? How is it for you to uh, trust people? I was a loner. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, there was kids around the neighborhood, and they were playing in you know their yard and in the driveway, and. Um, I would just stay in my own yard and do whatever I had to do and dig in the dirt and climbing trees and, you mm. know. Um, I had a longtime friend, Andrea, mm -hmm. and we had pictures of when we first started kindergarten. And uh, she's always been my friend. She comes friends. in town. Yeah. yeah, she's a snowbird. <laughs> yeah, but uh, other than that, and we used to go over to her house, um, you know, like three times a week, whatever, and have her mother make us a salad with Italian dressing because <laughs> my family was, was German. Yeah. And they knew nothing about it, that spicy... Italian stuff. Lip chicken stuff, you know. And it's <laughs> like, I used to go over there three times a week and just, just for a salad. Drink the salad dressing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, yeah, it was fantastic. So, and then uh, Uncle Ron and Aunt Mabel, um, they they didn't get married till they were about 30, 35, something like that. And it's like, me being a teenager, I thought, when she became pregnant with, with Ral, I thought, she's an old lady. How is she going to have a kid? <laughs> you know, but, and that was the end of that thought. So, yeah. I wasn't too, uh, I didn't think too much of anything, you know. It's like, <laughs> here today, gone tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, but they lived there, and it's like, um, Uncle, they would go for a Sunday afternoon ride, and it would go to one of my aunt's house, and that was fine. Well, when they would say that they're going to um, Aunt Emma's, I used to go, oh, I'm not going there. Because <laughs> um, Aunt Emma, uh, Uncle Van, I, I didn't like him. He was too quiet, mm. and he was always out in the field. Then he was in, in with his pigs. He had nasty pigs. <laughs> They'd eat you up. Pigs will eat each other. That's why pigs are disgusting. Yeah. They're cannibalists. In case you didn't know that, they'll eat each other. If one dies in the pen or it's yeah, sick, they'll yeah. eat it. Oh, I didn't they have, know They're that. not discriminatory. They'll eat their own. Mm -hmm. So, But one of the things, well, I want to ask you, how do you think do, being in that kind of environment, not having a, a mom, how do you think it did, it did affect you at all raising your own kids? Yeah, because I really didn't have anybody to fall back on. I had nobody to help me with my kids. And no answer uncles because they couldn't stand your father. So that was the end of that. <laughs> Why? Why? Because he was Italian. Oh, that's right. I forgot. You know, that's you that thought be, back yeah. then. Come on. And, um, but I didn't have any answer. Actually, even my sister, um, my oldest sister, actually, when I was married to your father, I don't think my sisters even come to see me. Mm -mm. Or my brothers. I don't remember no. seeing anybody. Carol come to see see us once, and she didn't last too long because of her mouth. <laughs> 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 so, 
So she was out the door with an unwelcome sign behind her. (laughs) 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 But um, I don't know. I didn't have any anybody to to uh, lean on or whatever. It was it was all on me and your dad. So were you frustrated with four kids? Because you were 26, right, by the time you had all this? Yeah, I used to have my go in the bathroom and <laughs> almost <laughs> explode, but, you know, and you, 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 because the thing is, I see, I can't understand how, I don't care how young they are, how a, a parent can beat or misuse their children the way... I've seen, or you know, on TV or heard or whatever, and it's like, yeah, you kids got a good whipping every once in a while, <laughs> but you didn't turn out bad because of it. Well, I asked you a question a couple of weeks ago. I said, "Why? What do you think is wrong with the kids today?" And your response to me was, <laughs> "They need a good slap inside that. Like that. They didn't get abused <laughs> like you guys did." And I cracked up because you just said it so now. Oh. Which was they didn't uh, get abused like you yeah. did. <laughs> oh well. So anyway. So do you want to ask? Yeah. So I didn't. How did, how did you meet Heidi's dad? I don't think I want to answer. Yes, that you one. do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Just blows the theory. Of Is that the Olive Garden? Before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, no abstinence is most the, the, uh, the abstinence yeah. theory before marriage. No, I was. <laughs> no, or what is it? That's not the word. Abstinence. Abstinence. <laughs> What's abstinence? It's not it's doing something. It. Is it something? Yeah. something <laughs> oh, abstinence <laughs> means you're being stubborn. Right. Abstinence means no. Well, I no, think was being well, That would be the no welcome sign. That would be the no welcome sign. <laughs> Well, I was being an obstinate. <laughs> tell show the story, because you tell it. I don't think I've told you the story, have I? If I knew it, I wouldn't have asked. <laughs> okay, so I worked as um, uh, dry cleaners when I was 18. And just to get away from, because I lived with my aunt and uncle. And that's another thing. I was put in a girl's home because my, my mother passed away. My grandmother passed away a year later and nobody wanted me. So I was put in a girl's home, and a Catholic... Go back a second. I I can't let that go (laughs) by. I mean, come on. What what do you mean nobody wanted you? Nobody stepped up and wanted to take me in. You're going to make me cry (laughs) now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But... um, when Aunt Mabel got pregnant for Rao, all of a sudden, Uncle Rowan and Aunt Mabel wanted me. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until later years that um, I thought about it, and it was, they needed a babysitter. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, and then, what I think what pushed me into your father's life was um I feel like a fool. <laughs> you haven't talked Why? about this. Why? Because you got pushed into the other life. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. But that's a good question. What? Why? Why? Why what? Why, why do you feel like a fool? Well, because I'm airing my laundry. Mm. <laughs> You're marrying your laundry. I'm yeah. airing. Oh, yeah. that's okay. You can air your laundry. But we still haven't we haven't heard about how you met dad okay yeah, let me go back a second okay. this, this is so prevalent in people that uh, are not treated well that you feel hurt by it and it's okay I mean obviously like any human being would feel hurt by this I'm hurt listening to it but you have to know you came into this world perfect it's the people around you that somehow were very clumsy with life, <laughs> that didn't know how to do the right things at the right time. Mm-hmm. So d- none of this is a reflection on you. You know, you were you were never bad. You were never, you know, unworthy of love. None but, of those things are true. But I'm the one that's got to bear the the cross for it. Unfortunately, yeah, that is true. So you go on and you do the best you can. And you don't try to think about that stuff, mm. and you um, 
try to to raise your children and live your life in the, in a good good way. Mm. So you rose and above a, all that. And because mm. of my upbringing, and I'm going to answer another question for you. <laughs> that sounded like of, a trouble. <laughs> That was something. a threat. That was a threat. <laughs> <laughs> the reason, and it's not until my later years, when I know how much you've been hurt, that I haven't been able to hold my children after they reached a certain age. When they were babies, I was constantly loving and kissing and everything. But... As you got older, I I just kind of didn't, and I think it's because of what happened to me. Of course, yeah. The image guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, because the point of the, the point of the conversation, mom, too, is to help you know our listeners that listen to this show. Everything comes from some place, you know, yeah. behaviors. Um, when people depend on drugs and alcohol and all these other things to cope, sex, you know, everybody has some vice. Yeah. It, it does come from someplace else. And what you had said earlier was you just put it behind you, you forget about it, but there's no but to it. You forget about it and you think that you're going through your life and you're not thinking about it, but you, it is there all the time because when you're going through life and you're maybe you have a, obviously you have attachment issues because whoever you were supposed to bond with you didn't have a strong bond with anybody when you were little mm -hmm. so then that takes in that it takes in trust you don't really trust anybody because somebody's gonna screw you over again so it does kind of in in a in a way it it filters over into your whole life in some degree with relationships yeah. with other people with lovers with your children <coughs> yeah so the point I'm, I'm trying to make right now is that th this you're on the show too because of that reason to try to help other people that yeah. you don't ever really you don't forget it yeah, yeah. well and it, it's good to talk about it to bring you know you some people say don't don't live in the past no you don't live in the past you talk to people that are that have a little bit of empathy and it it helps you get it off your chest and recognize really what you went through Absolutely it slaps true. you in the face, hmm. you know, and it's like, I don't know, my attitude is like, deal with it. Hmm. You know, you deal with it the best you can. But you've had so many years in your life where you weren't allowed to have feelings, right? Like, I mean, if you, if you look back, it's like, it wouldn't have helped you because you had nobody to talk to, nobody yeah. to confide in. And so you develop this this really strong thing of okay, I'm just going to move on. Yeah, and I'm going to. Yeah. I'm, so you built up this wall, and you needed. And that some wall. people call it independence. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> it's a. True, vo it's it? avoidance. <laughs> That's true. It's avoidance. Yeah. And it's helped you through a certain yeah. amount of time. Yeah. Until you know the marriage, and then yeah. you see it coming up again with kids. Yeah. And um. By the way, you're really brave to come on here because, you know, because <laughs> I'm not going to, we don't let anything go. But listen, you are helping, I, I mean, I hope yourself, you know, and Heidi, but there's so many people that I think are so into just themselves. They're very narcissistic, right? It's yeah. all about my hurt and I don't think past myself. So what I'm saying is that there's a lot of kids and they get older. And they have these problems. Yeah. And they want to blame the parent. And it's like their fault, their fault. But they never take the time to really know their parent, to understand how much hurt or what the parent has had to go through. Yeah. In the beginning, because there's no manual. Yeah. Like you have a child and there, there's the manual. What do I do? Okay, I'm going to be a perfect parent. And, yeah. you know, like what you're describing is unbelievable. Like you, you never saw a good relationship. You didn't see a mother and father. You didn't see people in a loving situation. You didn't have 
the the appropriate attachment. You didn't have emotional connection. You didn't have an unstressed Well, we did have family uh, reunions, and it's like it was in Grandma's backyard, and it was just like, to me, it was a group of people. Hmm. I mean, they were supposed to be cousins, aunts, uncles, whatever, but they were like just groups of people that they were invited. Hmm. So there was no... But I got to sip my grandmother's foam off her beer. (laughs) 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 I can't believe she drank beer. I I didn't. I, I sipped, you sipped the foam. The foam. <laughs> <laughs> so, but think about that, though, right? Like, if everybody would you're, acknowledge their situation, but then go back and say, what did my parents go through? Yeah. You know, and stop expecting parents to be gods and stop blaming their life on their parent, mm-hmm. right? And um, if I'm allowed, I mean, we're talking about everything today, so I might as well say it. Like, Heidi will come up with things, and we've had these talks. Mm-hmm. And I would say, knowing what I know through a lot of studying, go back a little bit. You have no idea what your mother's been through. And parents that I know, they that their children are the greatest thing that they've ever put into this world. Mm -hmm. And you do the best you can, and you hide all of these horrible things from your kid. Yeah. And they think you're God, and they have no idea the stuff and the things that you have had to walk through to give them the best life you could. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, even though you know all this, you still hold it back because you don't want to put it on your children. Yeah. You know, and that's an amazing thing, too. Like, I do all this lifting of weights and stuff. Listen, you're 20 times stronger than I'll ever be. Because if it was me and I saw my kid acting out, the first thing I would think is, oh, by the way, let me tell you, I, at least I'm here. I was from an but, orphanage. But <laughs> you know, one of the things that like you I learn, would burst out and say like, that. As you get older and you have your own children and you have your own relationships and you have your own experiences, what's happened to me, and I can be thankful now that in my past, aunts had said mean things to me about my mother or gave me information about your life, but it was done in a malice way. Mm-hmm. It was done to be vindictive and hurtful. And so I knew things, but I never said anything either. Yeah. Because it would be hurtful, it'd be whatever it was. But as I got older, and especially after when I had Ava, you know, for me that was the, one of the best times in my life. Like I yeah. remember having her, the whole experience was amazing. And to this day, I mean, I would kill for that kid. Like I don't yeah. care what she does. I mean, she's my child. Yes, she makes bad decisions and, and whatever at times, but she's my baby. and. When you go through things like that and you, you start looking at things, and I was in a situation in a, the marriage I was in, mm-hmm. and you know Ava's come f- and said things to me, but she goes, Mom, I, I know that it, you did what you could do. And this it's taken me years of maturity, being in a relationship, seeing how people love, they don't love, uh, having a baby of my own and realizing that you know I always try to do the best for her. And, and I didn't tell Ava a lot of things about me either. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it's just something you don't, and I'm, I'm not going to give her all the dirt that went on in my past or my life. I mean, I disclose a little to her. Yeah. But it's like Joe said, you just go on, like even her father, you know, I, I won't say bad things about her father to her. It's no. like, you know what? You figure it out. I'm not going to Okay. Be... Did I ever say anything bad about your father to you? No. No. So... You, you hold on to all this and then you experience yourself and you go, this is an awful thing because it's like you feel like you are you have to be the one to take the high road, which mm-hmm. always uses that word. And you watch the this other, I don't know what you want to call it, cyclone going on around you and you're trying to protect your kids and you're also trying to do what you can do. Yeah. And I said to him before, I said, listen, if I, I had Ava 30 years old and I thought I knew it all because I was older. I'd help raise, you know, Amanda and Christina and the younger ones. And you don't you don't really know anything when you're a mom. You just you do the best you can with the circumstances. I look back now yeah. and I think, oh, if I would have handled that differently, if I would have not made it about me as as far as what was going on with her dad mm-hmm. and just was present. I guess that's the only word I could say. Yeah. I, I wasn't as present as I should have been all the time when I was raising Ava. Yeah, you know, but I I became aware of your situation, and I said to Joe, I don't know how I would be as a person if I had the life my mom had. How nurturing would I be? Because that was one thing 
when Ava left, one of the things that really hurt me a lot was I spent all of her young years loving on her, kissing her, even into her, you know, middle school years where it was always, there was, I showed her a lot of affection and that was because of me, but it was also because of John. He was not emotionally there. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I had to do the job of a father and a mother with the, the affection. But I also, in my opinion, I didn't have a lot of nurturing when I was growing up. I didn't right. feel a lot of love and a lot of, and this is not to hurt you, by the way. This is yeah. just because I'm over it. Yeah. I, I'm, I don't, I whatever. But being a mother myself, I said, when I have my baby, I want to make sure that she always knows. The touch. Even when she's not behaving, she's she. I still love her. And I used to tell her that I love you. I don't like your behavior right now, but I still love you. And I'd always made sure that she felt me. Yeah. You know, and what's ironic is that Ava has a tendency to be a lot like her father, that when I go to touch her, she moves away or I get the forehead. Kiss the forehead. I remember like, the forehead. What the fuck is the forehead? I said to her, I am not kissing your forehead. Give me a hug. So ironically, but this is now that's another day for a show. Genetics come into play, right? Yeah. So here I am, lovey, 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 <laughs> and I got a kid that has a lot of, a lot of her. Yeah. Genetics. Like I, I tell Ava, give me a hug, and she. Yeah, it's like how did that happen? Headbutt me. It's like. So, but, but my point is, when you think about all of this, right? When you yeah, start breaking yeah. it down, you go, would it have made that much of a difference? Yeah. When we, okay, and this is going back to when we blame our parents. Would it have made that much of a difference in my life today if I would have been, had the situation with you the way I wanted, ideally, a mother, daughter, when yeah. I was little? Would it have made that much of a difference in who I am today? No, because Zave is an altogether different person. But, but what I'm saying is because then I took that and I said, because I didn't feel I had that, I'm going to make sure this child has that. Guess what? In the end, it didn't make that much of a difference yeah. because she still did whatever the universe or whatever she she yeah. was supposed to do, and she's still like that. I mean, it's 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 hard for her to to hug me, to kiss me. I mean, I'm like, come on, put your arm. you're the same way, you know. Yeah. Put my arm, put your arms around me. Like, can I get somebody in this world to give me a freaking hug, like a nice, you know? I mean, seriously. So I do it. I do it to everybody I can because I'm a touchy feeling. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So I guess what I, my point I got off of was that for a lot of years, me personally, I always felt like you didn't like me, and I was like, I don't know what I did or I didn't do. But as I got older and I had my own kid, I realized it wasn't anything I didn't did or didn't do. It was you did the best you could do mm -hmm. under the situation. And I'll, honestly, I would have not never been able to handle four kids at the under the age of 26 with no help because I had all I could do with one kid. You know? Yeah. So he asked me a question how I met your father. Yes, yeah. we want to know that. This is nasty. This story. I could have gotten away first. with it. This is a nasty story. No. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Let's get started. I could. I could have gotten away with that one. You're not. Because I could have snuck I want right you under the table. No, we're, <laughs> we're getting back. <laughs> right <laughs> out the door. I got the notes right here. Oh. <laughs> just, just keep the notes. <laughs> um, well, I worked at a dry cleaners. I was 18. And I used to, just to get away from Aunt Mabel and Garan and screaming kids, I would walk down, you remember Lockport Plaza? Mm -hmm. I would walk down that big hill, and I would just sit there. I would just sit there. And at that time, I didn't smoke. So it's not to sneak away and get a smoke or anything. I just sit there on the goat, I guess they call it a goat path. I don't know. Goat path? Goat. Oh, goat. Goat. Goat path. Okay. That's where he used to herd the goats okay. on that hill before they built they it built up. They built it up. Okay. So um, I saw this 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 white Chevy, 58 Chevy, go by. Boy, is that cute. Ooh. Okay. I kept watching it. Then I, I think it was about two weeks later or something like that. Because every time I went down there, this car was going into Lane's drugstore. Okay, yeah, he's thinking of cigarettes okay. probably. <laughs> and he had the he had the mud flaps. He had the the fender skirts. It was white. It was pristine. Clean. It was really, you know, all the chrome the fifty eights used to. Have. Oh God, that car was. And I I'm thought, seeing the knight in shining armor here. That's wow! Yeah, that was yeah. Of <laughs> on a on a, a, in white, a Chevy, a fifty-seven Chevy. Chevy. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I I thought, well, okay. So I started home, and 
all of a sudden, the car comes up the street, and I went, oh, what am I going to do? Evidently, he saw me sitting on that hill. For a couple of days, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So I got up, and I started walking home, and the car goes by. Whew. So I kind of go a little bit faster <laughs> home, and I get right in front of the house, and he's coming around the other way because it was like a street that went this way and then it turned and came around. <laughs> and he turned around and he says, he introduced himself and I said, well, I'm on my way home. Okay, well, would you like to go for a cup of coffee first? Oh my God, the coffee. <laughs> the pickup line of the century. <laughs> but me being so stupid and naive, you know, so anyway, listen. If it wasn't for that cup of coffee, you wouldn't be here yeah, right now. See, see, cup of coffee and two sugars later. Oh, that's all it took. Wow, that, how much did that cost? So, oh my god, two sugars later. Yeah, I gotta remember that. Oh my god. So, um. Went for coffee. He dropped me off at the house. Uncle Rowan, he's standing there. You know, with that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that lower lip that stuck out. And he says, and where have you been? And who were you with? And who is that? And where do they live? I thought, one question at a time. I'm, I'm thinking in my brain. But I was never disrespectful to adults. So I said, oh, that was just a friend. We just went for coffee. And two sugars. And two later. sugars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't tell him about two sugars. And uh, so I, I gave him my telephone number, and I I told my, my uncle, I says, I gave him the telephone number, and uh, he's going to call me a, a couple nights or something, I don't know, to go somewhere or whatever. And Uncle Ron says, I thought he was just a friend. I just turned around and walked in the house. So anyway, he called me, and when he had called me, he called me from the base out there in, in Shawnee. Mm -hmm. And um, we just got talking, and we talked for about two weeks, just yakking on the phone. That seems to be a common theme. And then uh, he... he uh, back then they talked a yeah. long yeah, time. Yeah, before, yeah. And then... Uh, he, sa he says, um, well, you know, in the conversation, he found out that I worked at uh, uh, Camerata's dry cleaners, and he stopped by there one day. Oh, my God, I was so Oh, I almost died. My oh, my God, I almost died. I thought, oh, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's how we got together. But Aunt Rachel loved the death out of him. She just loved him. Here comes my Bobby. <laughs> it's like, and you know what? She was the only one in in my life as a child that actually grabbed me, pulled me to her, and gave me a hug. Hmm. In my life, hmm. she's my favorite aunt. Yeah, yeah. Answer some questions for you right there. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, I'm a co I'm a cheap date too, apparently, because you invited me for coffee. Two sugars? No. Well, I never drank sugar in my coffee, though. It was only coffee. I got you would make for coffee all the time. <laughs> I got it even cheaper. You got it even cheaper. <laughs> there wasn't even any sugar with Say. it. <laughs> so Heidi was the first... Born. Born. Yep. Tell me about that. What was it like being a mom? Like that first second. Like, okay, here I go. Like <laughs> Shit. I'm I don't even... Uh, Oh, yes, I do. Here I am, big <laughs> belly, big belly pregnant, right? And I'm just going, whatever, it's happening, it's happening, I guess. And uh, we moved down on Coal Springs Road, way in the way, it's way off the main road, right? But it was a nice place. And I had a cat there, naturally. 
Well, the telephone guy came and ran the cat over. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Skin the, the skin the skin right off his foot. I got on the I went over to oh my God. um I didn't know we were going that I didn't know we were going that direction. Yeah. <laughs> so I go to the phone and I call your father at the base. And I said, You gotta come home right now. The cat got run over. And you know, your father knowing his personality, it's like, oh Jesus <laughs> You know. But he, he was home in about five minutes. I guess he figured my condition, you better do something, you know? <laughs> so he came and we, he took the, we took the cat to the vet and I come to find out the, the electric company or the telephone company, whoever ran her over, ended up paying for it. And oh they, you know, stretched the skin out and fixed her, and she was she was fine. But that was a, you know, your father was having a nervous breakdown and wondering what was going to happen to me because my poor cat got hurt. Oh <laughs> God! So that that was that was kind of nice, but we had that great big Market Street hill that we had to walk up if you had to go to the store. Mm. Here I am, big belly. <laughs> We're gonna go to the store. Yeah, I get to the first crook in the road. I so don't think I'm gonna go that far. So I call him again. Oh my God. <laughs> I said, like you're my ass. <laughs> Bob, can you come home now and get bring some coffee <laughs> <laughs> with two sugars? sugars. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he says. You know, I can't leave right now. He says, but I'll leave in a few minutes, and I'll be there probably in the next half hour. Two hours later. Well, anyway, so I, uh, he took me to the hospital, and um, I can't remember how long it took him to leave, but he didn't stay stick around long. <laughs> he wasn't around for any of the kids. I think for, that's the way it was back then, though. That's for his son. Oh, he knew it was gonna. It was a boy. Mm. The neighbors had to, told him it's a boy. He was home putting garbage out. He had to put garbage out. <laughs> mm. So here I am, moaning, groaning in the hospital all by myself. <laughs> Like, here we go again. You, you all, by again. Yeah. all by myself. All by myself. Yeah, losers. You would. You would have <laughs> thought I woke up by the second child, wouldn't you? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I, <laughs> <laughs> but you want to hear a good one? When I was pregnant with Ava, this should make you happy. He said that he goes. I never ever seen any of you kids born. He goes, and I'm going to go with you. I, mean, I want to see this grandbaby. Oh, you're kidding. No. So he was there when I had my ultrasound done, and they yeah. do all that. And he was sitting there, and he was talking to the the tech, and he's like, "This is amazing." He goes, "I, I had no idea they could do all this." And it's like, "Dad, they just came out with this. They didn't do it when we were kids." But if you would have been present, you would have known that. <laughs> I probably would have passed out. I think he would have. I think Dad was softy when it came to that kind of stuff. So when you held Heidi, though, for the first time, were you scared? No. 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 Yeah. Oh, mine. <laughs> All these little toes, fingers. I can remember putting her so tight, and then the nurse came in and wanted to take her. And I said, no, um, I'll keep her here. She says, ma'am, she's got to go in the nursery. When's she coming back? <laughs> I almost got out of bed and beat that living daylights out of that nurse. What's the hardest thing about being a mom? See, you're going to make me cry again. <laughs> <laughs> seeing them go through a rough time in life and seeing them hurt. Mm. Because I never wanted um, any harm or any hurt to come to them. But that's life. Hmm. What's the best part? Is having them all here. <laughs> um, I, I, I kid around, but I say I came out here to Las Vegas and I stayed with my youngest daughter, Tammy, for a while. And I'll be a son of a gun, they all follow me here. <laughs> 
<laughs> I said I got out here to get away from them, and they're all here. <laughs> so. So, what makes Heidi special? <laughs> Tell me how proud you are of her. <laughs> um, she's come a long way in the last couple of years. Um, when she was with John, and I'm sure she told you, um, I went over one day and I said, Heidi, your arms are getting fat. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess the light bulb went on and she went on to to exercising and go to the gym and stop smoking and eating right and she's been on her way ever since hmm. yeah and I'm proud of her <laughs> and my daughter Tammy I'm proud of her um, my son I'm going to beat the hell out of him um, Felicia she's finally um, come her way and I think she, I think she's going to be alright mm. I was kind of worried about her but I, I think <laughs> some people might say Felicia's my favorite she's not my favorite I don't have any favorites of my children but I try not to anyway but Felicia always she needed what I needed when I was I guess I recognize that. That's great. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. She needed attention. She needed uh, the love when when she got it, and she needed to be corrected, and she needed to be beat up. And <laughs> 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 but, I'll let you take over the end. I don't want to ask all the questions. It's your mom. Well, I'm just saying. I'm glad you came on the show. I'm glad we're we're close. Yeah, and I'm proud of you too. too. I hope you stay close. But we do, but I'm, I'm proud of you too, Mom, because you've been through a lot in your life, and you're a tough lady. You were, that's not what you were going to say. No, <laughs> I was going to say that I spent a lot of time, I have to say, like some girls w would say with their mothers, there's always, I don't know if it's a competition or what it is, but there's a part where girls do not get along with their mothers. They don't always like their mothers. And then you could come to a point in your life where you you can look at your mom and go, you know what, I understand. Yeah. And it's what it is. Stop, look, and listen. Yeah, it's about under... It, the, yeah. said the one word, I understand. That's all you got to say. Yeah. You finally get to that point where you go, I get it. Yeah. And the rest of it doesn't... It kind of goes Yeah, bye-bye now. Mm -hmm. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Which, you know, some people can let it go bye-bye because they just let it go bye-bye. That's life. But there are some people that say um, they need to know why. Mm. You know, there's always that question, why? Be able to uh, find happiness now? Yeah. After all that rough beginning? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I'm happy with my uh, all my little fuzzy friends. <laughs> How, how many uh, how many dogs do you have? Three. Three. <laughs> yeah. Sandy. Lucy, which is a chihuahua. Mm -hmm. That's and the one Kobe wants to eat. Sparky. All right, then. Well, thanks for coming thanks on the show on. and being all that was that was took a lot of bravery. <laughs> Yeah. I guess I, didn't, I really didn't know what I was going to talk about at first, and I thought. Well, we just we <laughs> just, just draw, we you just drew it out of me. What was it you called? Put me in a when closet? you don't have a lot of stuff, don't say what we're called, John. We were just doing improv. Improv. Lazy. 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 No. <laughs> Spontaneous. Impromptu. 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 Yeah. 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 So thanks for watching the Rise Above Show. I am Joe Perry. <laughs> Heidi Mancini. And. Evelyn Mancini. Yeah. <laughs>